All right, guys, welcome back. In the last video, we walked through getting the Tesla full self-driving computer, also known as Hardware 3 installed. We took it for a spin, gave some initial thoughts and impressions. And now that we've had it for a while, we've been able to test it more extensively. Let's see what's new and let's see what's changed. So to make sure everyone is on the same page, when we talk about Hardware 3, we're specifically talking about the full self-driving enabled capabilities. Any Tesla produced after roughly around July 2019 is likely to have Hardware 3, but that doesn't mean the full self-driving capabilities, unless you paid for it. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get to the caveat in our testing. Since getting the full self-driving computer, we've gotten a new software update 2019-36.2.1. This means that we were not able to test both Hardware 2 and Hardware 3 with the same software in the same car. Therefore, it's difficult to tell whether the behavior that we're seeing is specific to Hardware 3 or specific to the software build. So let's keep that in mind and let's get to it. The first thing we wanted to test was the visualization. As of now, the only visually distinctive feature for Hardware 3 is cone recognition. No stop sign recognition, no stoplight recognition, but cones and lots of cones. You don't realize how many cones are around you until you have this feature. It's like a cone detector and it seems to go out of its way to show any cone in view of its cameras. It's insane. The level of accuracy and distance that the car can see and visualize cones. We noticed that the car can display more cones than cars in any given frame on the display. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, all the cone-like objects, be it drums, barrels, or poles, are all recognized, but visualized as orange cones. We even tested cones painted white, and they were still recognized and displayed as orange cones. The car even looks to avoid cones while on autopilot by insisting on a lane change out of the lane with cones. Now, aside from the cones, everything else is exactly the same in terms of the visualization. Next up, we wanted to test how it performed on local roads. On local roads, we noticed that the car does a great job of extrapolating or estimating lane lines. What I mean by this is that as you can see, there are lane lines to the left of the car, but just a curb or park cars to the right. And without a right lane marking, it used to be difficult to engage autopilot on local roads. Now the car sees the curb or park cars and draws a lane line to indicate the drivable path. Again, not sure if this is software or hardware specific, but it's definitely a good feature. Okay, so now on to autopilot and navigate on autopilot. When testing autopilot, we noticed no difference in lane keeping or auto lane changing. The car didn't make any lane changes any faster or slower than it did with hardware 2, and if it did, it was imperceptible to us. Any enhancements from 36.1 were persistent with 36.2.1 for Hardware 3. The car still moves over for trucks and truck-like vehicles and maintains itself in the lane. This is mostly a good thing, except the car still does the thing where it swerves to center itself when lanes merge. We thought this would be resolved with the ability to extrapolate lane lines, but that's not the case. In addition, the nag is also no different with Hardware 3 and comes up as frequent or infrequent as it did with Hardware 2. Taking exits and interchanges is still a mixed bag as the car still finds it acceptable to run over the line for aggressive exits. Where we did see some differences in Hardware 3 came when we tried to test the turning radius limits of autopilot. We drove down a very windy road known as Devil's Backbone. Comment below if you know where that's from to see if Hardware 3 could fare any better than Hardware 2. We set the speed to 20 miles an hour and gave it a shot. And to no avail, Hardware 3 was incapable of handling sharp turns and disengaged immediately with a warning. Our suspicion here is that it's limited by software to not allow the wheel to turn beyond a certain radius while on autopilot. And that's what prevents it from navigating this road. However, it definitely felt like the car wanted to make the turn but was bound by its software. For comparison, Hardware 2 disengaged a lot sooner than Hardware 3 on this exact same road. As for other driverless features, we tested both Smart Summon and Auto Park. 
neither have gotten faster or more intuitive with hardware three which isn't necessarily a bad thing They're pretty much the exact same way they were in hardware two so what's the verdict overall our prevailing theory is that hardware three is much more capable than its software allows it to be and as tesla releases more full self-driving features we'll start to see further differentiation between hardware two and hardware three let us know in the comments what your thoughts are and what your experience has been with hardware three and if you've seen anything or tested anything that we may have missed until the next time enjoy your day and enjoy your tesla